I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 12th of February, 2023. I'm out in Las Benitas on the beach. It is an absolutely gorgeous morning and uh, my foot is hurting a lot. We're gonna fill you in. Let's go to the day. All right, after a long walk and going dancing yesterday, I got up this morning and my foot was swollen, something horrible. I could barely stand up. I was shoes on and all the, the, the cushion on the bottom of the shoes, at least I'm able to walk, but it's tough. It hurts a lot. But I'm here at what was the Simple Beach and the Beach Bar and Grill. It is now being rebranded as Pirate's Point Restaurant and uh, the new murals are going in. So that's why I've grabbed you guys while we're here. I don't get a lot of chance to show you the beaches, but I am coming back later and I'm going to show this is Buena Onda Surf School right next to Pirate's Point. And these are the new murals. And I can't show them being painted because he walked away, but I had to get a little bit. This is this one's being done right now. <laughs> And this one went in yesterday. So this is all the new Pirate's Point restaurant. All right, here's all the painting supplies. We're gonna be partying on the beach later today. So I'm just grabbing this. I'm waiting for my taxi to head back, get working on the videos for you guys. And then we're coming back here to party this afternoon. It was a busy day trying to get videos done and just lots of work and rest and everything in between events because this evening was uh, out here in Las Panitas again, not where I am now, where I filmed just a minute ago, uh, the Super Bowl party at some friend's house and they had a lot of people and a cash bar and people in the pool and a lot of people watching the game. We didn't watch the game, but we hung out and just visited uh, with everyone. It was really nice. It's a good chance to get together. Very much obviously an expat uh, activity, uh, which we don't do very often. So it was a nice chance to hang out with kind of a completely different crowd. We're normally in the Leon, uh, um, kind of local crowd we go to a lot of local bars and local venues and and do kind of normal local things uh, and when we're on the beach we often hang out at pelican uh, like last night um, and other local hangouts and we see the expats who cross paths there or hang out at the hotel uh, but we don't often go to kind of expat events where we're sort of straddling the communities a bit uh, so tonight was one of the rare really expat focused events because i mean super bowl most most nicaraguans are like the what now i don't even know what that is uh so uh but that was fun i have no idea who played or who won or what the game was or anything i saw like two seconds of it, but uh, we had a nice time. In today's topic, we're going to talk about uh, more about business in Nicaragua and how you really should think about the flow of money. That's going to be today's topic, but I'm not going to film it here. I'm not filming the Super Bowl party, uh, but I'm going to take you to an interesting, cool location, show some awesome street walking of a completely different part of Nicaragua, and we're going to talk about this really important concept that probably a lot of people get. But for those of you who have not really thought about it, I really want to make sure woo, we got a lot of wind all of a sudden. We want to make sure that people are really internalizing um, how to think about where your money comes from when in Nicaragua, because getting this right or wrong will make all the difference uh, to your financial success living here in Central America. All right. So today you may notice that things look just a little bit different on the show and that is because I am filming today's episode while taking a beautiful walk south of the village of Moyogalpa on the island of Ometepe. Now this is not where we are today so uh, this is not a show about Ometepe uh, but I am doing my filming here so you have kind of a teaser as to where some filming is going to be happening coming up in the near future so you have that to look forward to in the next few days but I did want to take the opportunity to film out here while I am here and get something different because we do so much filming in Leon that it is uh, uh, it's nice when we get a chance to show something else and there is so much beautiful stuff around Nicaragua and Ometepe is one of the most unique things in the region so it's uh, it's very nice to get to show as much as possible if you did want to look at a map and get an idea of where we are uh, that is look at the, vo the village of Moyagalpa that is the primary settlement on the island of Ometepe, that is the giant volcanic island in the middle of Lago Nicaragua, and uh, look to the far west, there is a small city-ish thing with a port, that is where we are. This is the main road, because there is really only the big ring road going around the city, 
or around the island, I should say. And uh, that is what we are walking south on, heading kind of towards uh, San Jose del Sur. However, that is 12 kilometers away, and we are definitely not going to be walking that far. And if you want to find it on the map, that is the Hotel La Estancia, La Paz de Oasis, here on the island, one of the bigger hotels, kind of fancy, um, and uh, not where we are staying, just where we are walking by. All right, so today's topic, I have nothing really to report for the day day. It is uh, just a day of work and stuff, so I don't really have any, any news there. Uh, some people, and I get this regularly, I get a lot of questions. I'm gonna show a little bit of the hotel here. Because this, this is one of the rare, nicer, larger places on the island. The other side of the street is just uh, a field, uh, so there's nothing to show at all, but this is, this is a pretty neat place. We came past this uh, at night. I haven't seen this in the daylight. It is a gorgeous location, lots of parking, very visible from the main road. Um, obviously, I've never stayed there. I have no idea if it's really nice or not, but it looks awfully nice. And we're coming up on the gas station. And uh, this is about a kilometer south of Moyagalpa, so if you're getting off the boat, you do have a little bit of a walk to get here, but it is walkable. We walked it, uh, so yeah. Uh, so a lot of people have all along, and for obvious reasons, constantly asking me about business ideas and things for here in Nicaragua. And today while I was talking about that with someone, kind of the idea uh, of what is the underlying problem uh, occurred to me. Now I've done lots of episodes about why businesses fail here, how you need to think about business, can you offset living here with a business, which the easy answers are businesses fail because having a business here is generally a bad idea. Um, can you offset? No, because you're going to lose money. Most businesses lose money, right? Businesses don't just automatically make money. They take a lot of work and a lot of luck. You have quite beautiful walking areas here. Uh, in order to be successful. Businesses are hard. And in the United States, we have, or, or Canada or Western Europe, we're coming from regions that have some of the best opportunity for business in the world. You have rich customers in high concentrations. You have very large markets. Um, you have a need for niche services. You have an abundance of excess capital and excess spending and, and financial resources that just any random person off the street has the capability of spending a bit of money with you. People travel heavily. People uh, buy things that they don't need. Um, there's, there's just a lot of money moving around and it's a, it's a climate designed around having lots of business to move lots of money and there can be huge profits made sometimes just from the maneuvering of taxes through business. Like there's just so many ways to make money in business that it makes sense if it's your home market. If you're a foreigner, if you're an immigrant coming to the United States, and attempting to open a business, that's extremely hard unless you're bringing something from that other culture, right? If you're, say, coming from, from uh, uh, Lebanon and you want to open a Lebanese restaurant or you want to make Lebanese handicrafts, something that people in the United States can't acquire some other way, that can be valuable. That is a way to leverage the advantages of being from a different country. But outside of that, you're at a huge disadvantage because you don't know necessarily what Americans are looking for, Canadians or Western Europeans or whatever. You don't know what they're looking for. You don't know what's missing in their market. You don't know what the pricing should be. You don't know there's a million business things that are unique to that whatever individual market you're looking at, and you're at a huge disadvantage. So you need a really big advantage in order to offset the huge disadvantages. Otherwise, the people who have those advantages, the people who already live there, are going to do the same business as you and be wildly more successful at it simply because they have so much less to go wrong. They have so much less risk, so much less complication, so many fewer unknowns. They're in a much, much, much better position, all other things being equal. So that's always this challenge. When you're coming the opposite direction from a place like the United States or Western Europe or Canada to a market like Nicaragua, you have so many of those same challenges, but magnified by so many times. There are an abundance of people from each of those major regions. So you don't bring anything unique from those places to this market. 
you have a massive disadvantage in this market. Places like the United States have a certain amount of, of notoriety. The things that they have are well known and well documented in, in business classes and popular culture everywhere. You can move to the United States and have a fair idea of what things are going to be like with before you ever get there, but coming to a place like Nicaragua, you, you really cannot. And so you have a an exacerbated uh, disparity of experience and uh, local knowledge between those markets. And then you have the problem that you're moving from a market where people have all this money to spend on extra things, on, on niche activities or whatever, and you're moving to a place where that is absolutely untrue, as, as far extremely untrue as it can be. And so trying to make money in a market like this at the best of times is extremely hard. And the people who are doing it best are either uh, the rare, really well-funded business people who are able to come in and build things like factories and mines. Um, and that's very real, right? Our biggest, most successful businesses here are factories. And ones that came in with large amounts of outside money and did so long ago when it was a developing economy, early developing economy, and now, now it is very rare for a new business to come in and be really successful. Uh, and most of those that try are very, very small, basically cottage industries. Now that is what is successful here is cottage industries, very small businesses that are working from people's homes. They earn incredibly little money. Most of them, the ones that are successful, are not earning enough to make a foreign business person happy. Right, and so there's this disparity of, of gauge of success, right? If, if as an American, you're coming here and you're saying, oh, I wanna earn enough money to make it make sense for me to run a business here. Well, it has to be more than you can easily make doing something else or by doing nothing. Whereas a local who is from Nicaragua may say, well, I need to earn X amount to have a decent life. And I'm okay with that because I don't have a comparative that I have to beat because it's so easy to make whatever other amount of money. So the cost of lost opportunity for, for Americans or Canadians or Western Europeans is potentially extremely high. And for Nicaraguans may not exist at all. And so, so all of those factors mean that people are happily working and considered successful in cottage industries that are so small that they often would never even hit the radar of someone coming from another country to be something that they would want to do. And so you have to really look at those things and say, does this, does doing any business here make sense? And really you have to ask yourself, why is it in the first place that you want to do business here? That is the fundamental question. And that is kind of what I've been asking when I'm talking to people about this. At least I'm asking to myself and sometimes I ask to them, what is it in the first place that makes you desire to have a business in Nicaragua? Because it doesn't make a whole lot of logical sense if someone wants to be in business to choose Nicaragua as a place to do it. I love Nicaragua, I love living here. I absolutely wanna show the beauty and, the, and everything of this country, it is so fantastic. But it is not a place that you would say, well, where can I go and start a successful business? Pretty much the last place on your list is going to be Nicaragua. Like that is, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, there's no financial resources. There's no ability to import or export. There's no big, there's very few ports. It's, it's, logistics is very difficult. It's physically isolated. It's economically isolated. It doesn't have a large internal economy. It's a small market. Like the list goes on and on. It's very, very challenging. Um, businesses that have been here and have experience are going out of business left and right. Unemployment is through the roof. It is very, very hard. There are potential cases where business here would make sense, but you have to be really well thought out and very specifically leveraging the advantages of this market with the advantages of another market and combining the two, something that very, very few people have the knowledge and experience to do, and even fewer have the financial resources to back and make happen. So that's all stuff that you really have to consider that the, the fundamental idea, cute little house in the overtaken by the woods there. Uh, the fundamental idea of trying to have a business here is almost universally foolish. Now, of course, there are people who just love being in business and they wanna have a business no matter what. 
And if that's your goal, like you just want to have a business and you don't care if it makes money or not, great, absolutely come to Nicaragua and start a business. If your goal is simply to have a business, if your goal is simply to employ people and you don't care about making money, then we can't tell you how much we want to have you here, right? <laughs> like that does so much to help Nicaragua. That's wonderful, do that. But when people say, you don't need to ask me about what's going to be a viable business if your plan is not to have a viable business. You don't care. Right. So that's we, we rule those out as people asking the question. If you're asking, then we assume you're hoping that the business will actually function and be a real thing. And that makes sense. So that that is ruled out. Maybe you have a business and it's the thing you want to do and you want to be able to do it and you don't care that it makes very much money, but you do need it to be successful enough to, to pay for your time and make you able to live. That's reasonable, but still very, very challenging. And almost always I'm going to say, no, you can't do that. There are so many logistical challenges that may uh, create a scenario where you are unable to work, where you're unable to get paid. Um, you, you cannot be reliant on an income source inside the country, um, at least not until you have lived here a long time and have a very good support network and knowledge of the market uh, to do that. Doing that, uh, especially coming from abroad, right? You, you should not be looking at or asking questions about, um, you know, how do you buy a house from abroad? How do you start a business from abroad? What business would be good before you get here? Those are not questions that really should be getting asked before you're here. Those are things you really want to tackle after you're here, right? Because you don't have, even as a foreigner who's looking, this is an interesting road right here, by the way. I just want to show this. I have no idea where this goes. I'm not looking at the map as I walk. We are coming up on the airport though, which is interesting. So we're going to show that. Uh, even if you're just buying a house, you really don't anywhere buy a house until you live in that place. I know that TV shows like House Hunters International encourage this and make it seem like some, some dream to fly in on a vacation do a whirlwind tour with a with a real estate agent and come away with the house of your dreams. But you do realize those shows are staged and fake, right? Like those are not real real estate agents. Those are not real houses. Someone I know actually had his house on that show. It wasn't a house for sale. It wasn't a house that was actually seen. They just filmed random houses and put together the footage to make the show, which is fine. But you have to be aware that is not how you look for a house. That is not how you find your dream house. That's not how success happens. That is how you get scammed, right? That would be a terrible thing to do in real life. Don't try to do that. If you want to move to any place, you need to move to that place, rent, look around, get to know the place, and then buy a house. Once you really know the area, you really know what neighborhood you want to be in, what view you want to have, what neighbors you want to have, what restaurants you want to be able to walk to. You really got to spend time and get to know those factors before you can relocate with any success. And if that's true of a house, give him a second here, that's really loud. If that's true of buying a house, it is a thousand times more true of starting a business. You definitely don't do that remotely. You don't do that ahead of time. You wait until you are in a place and you start to get to know a market. And if you want to uh, bake pretzels and you want to be a pretzel bakery and you want, that's what you want to be is a master pretzel baker of Nicaragua, you need to get here. You need to find out what it takes to run a bakery here. You got to figure out what the availability of pretzels are in the local market today. You have to find out if people like pretzels. Do they like the pretzels you make? Are the pretzels that you make able to be made with the availability of resources that are here? There are so many things that you have to ask, so many things you have to determine that are unique to the market, that are just market research. And you need to do those things here. You can't do them from abroad. You can't test pretzels uh, from afar. You can't ask people if your pretzels are preferable to the local pretzels. It, are there local pretzels? Do people like pretzels, but they like them differently? Is there an expectation of pretzels uh, that you don't know about? We're gonna pause because we are coming up in the airport. I wanna show this, but we're gonna please stop so we don't wanna film while we walk through. Getting a shot of this pretty country lane by the airport. One of the things I hate, we come upon something really cool and interesting or we have a police stop in the airport. I'm going to show the airport after this talk so you'll have something to look forward to at the end of the video. But 
uh, it, gets, it interrupts me in the middle of a thought and I have to stop for a relatively long period of time. It's been 15 minutes since the last thing I said to you guys and I don't have any way to replay the video while I'm out on these walks with the GoPro. I have to just remember where I was, which is very difficult. Anyway, so all that said, the chances that you actually should be opening a business in Nicaragua is almost zero. The one really sensible scenario where people are, are opening businesses here or I should say investing in businesses here is for residency. If you're looking for an investor's residency here in Nicaragua, there is, there is a certain amount of money that you need to invest into a business and looking for a small business where you're able to invest and able to have control and keep an eye on things and not lose too much money uh, is, is potentially sensible. And that is one of the reasons why we started a business here it was for that exact purpose. We had several people that needed to move in, so we invested together and put in time to uh, investing in a business that we knew would uh, count towards our residency. That took research. Um, that would uh, potentially not lose money. It does, but potentially it won't. Um, that uh, provides a service that we care about, that makes sense for us, that we have experience in, and, and we have a hotel and restaurant, um, but we were both hoteliers and restaurateurs in the United States before coming here and we know that we are doing this for the purpose of employing people and to get our residency because we do know because we've lived here previously that Nicaragua is where we want to make our home we are not testing the waters we're not thinking that our business here is going to make us money uh, we have a very very different need and I think that that need can make sense but even that you need to you need to carefully question is that something that makes sense for you but if it does, then that is a reason to be investing, but that is not necessarily a reason to be opening your own business. It simply means that you should be considering investing in a business that would qualify. Uh, I know a lot of people who have gone together so that they each can put in a small amount of a somewhat larger business, uh, large enough that they're able to hire managers and stuff to run it. So that is something to think about. If you don't do that, you could be in the, in the somewhat dangerous predicament of having a tiny business that loses money but also requires that you personally run it <coughs> sorry and uh, that can be quite difficult because it can preclude you from doing other things to make money which may be important if you're if the business that you've done for your residency is losing money right because you that's assume that that is going to be the case you may get lucky and not lose money but assume you will lose money because of all the challenges we keep mentioning. Okay, so outside of the investment thing, so we've established you probably don't want a business, but let's talk about the, the concept of money and acquiring money and making money in Nicaragua, because I think that this is where people disconnect. And the thing that I came up with is, and now I have to put in a chapter marker here because this is so far into the video, is that you want to spend your money in Nicaragua. This is where you want to live, to habitate, to eat the food, to do your most of your shopping, to where you want to go on your vacations. This is where you want to be paying rent and those kinds of things. You want to live in Nicaragua, spend your money in Nicaragua, but you don't want to make money in Nicaragua. You want to make money abroad, spend here, earn elsewhere. That is the secret, and it shouldn't be a secret, I think it should be incredibly obvious. I don't know. I don't know what makes people connect where they live with where they make their money. Um, I guess I've always worked in industries that that kept those things as two independent floating concepts because they are. Um, a lot of people naturally associate. It's kind of like how people associate citizenship and residency. And, and those things together when they are very different concepts. Uh, and so we get a lot of trying to help people separate those in their minds here on the channel. And I guess it's similar with business that a lot of people say, well, if I'm gonna be living in you know, place X, I have to make my living there. Um, but that is in no way true. And in a case like Nicaragua is absolutely ill-advised in almost all cases, there has to be exceptions, but almost universally ill-advised and, and just generally 
there's no reason to have have had that assumption from the beginning. Um, coming from the U.S., coming from the default that people do, well, you know, you, you live in a place and you go look for a local job, and so the two are kind of connected because you went looking for a job. That makes sense. But when you're working in Nicaragua or you're living in Nicaragua and you want to work, you want to work from Nicaragua, you have lots of options. Now, if you're looking at opening a business anywhere, simply open that business somewhere else. Right, you are from another country, presumably, that's why you're watching this channel and asking that question. Use that location as the place to put your business. It's that simple. You have all the advantages that we talked about there. Now you also have the advantage of being based in Nicaragua. So you have tax advantages, you have cost of living advantages, you have uh, potentially um, some market knowledge advantages, but the big ones are the cost. You have the ability to potentially compete pretty hard against businesses that are physically located in the United States, Canada, or Western Europe because I need to come up with an abbreviation for those places because you don't need anywhere near as much money to be wildly successful. If you are happy running a business in the United States and bringing in $100,000 a year, you can move to Nicaragua, run that same business or similar, and if you brought in $35,000 a year or maybe $40,000 a year, you should be just as happy or happier that you have roughly equal buying power with an increasingly amazing lifestyle. There's a lot of tourists out on these roads all the time. And these little tiny cars, they're so funny, but there's no need for a big car out here. <laughs> very, very funny. But everywhere, and these beautiful fields we're walking through, this is just a lovely walk. There's nothing particularly islandy about a lot of the scenery. It's, it's a lot of this is just you would see this anywhere in Nicaragua. It is a little bit fresher here uh, because even though we're at, or nearly, sea level, we're just a tiny bit above sea level, we are, uh, we have quite a bit of breeze because of the island. You can kind of see down that path, the beach is down there, but there's a bit of fields here. So the real, the real thing, the way that you should be thinking is how do I make money in my home market or in a high cost market where you can be priced a little bit, whether it's your own business or you as an employee, can be priced a little bit below the market cost and be really advantageous to someone because you're less expensive, but to you, your buying power is dramatically increased. And if you're coming from America, it can be really dramatically increased because we have not just the cost of living advantages, but the, the massive tax advantages that uh, that is how you make this really work. Earn abroad, spend local. That's the secret. And for so many people, that's just, of course, they, they never thought of anything else. And when they come here, they're like, wait, people are trying to work here? Why? You're not even allowed to work here, right? Now you are allowed to invest and open a business and you're allowed to manage that business, but you're not allowed to work here. And so many people are like, well, I want a job there. No, you can't. You cannot discuss getting a job here. It's off the table, right? Well, I want to invest in a business here. Well, you're legally allowed to, but it's not going to make money. Just that's not how you're going to pay your bills. It's not absolutely impossible, but it's practically impossible. And the people who have done it successfully have been here a long time. They've paid their dues, they got to know the market, and they're still struggling. No one's getting rich doing this outside of the Florida Kanye people who've been here for 150 years with huge foreign money and a factory, right? So you really have to keep the perspective that it is a beautiful country, it is a wonderful country, it is a safe country, it is so nice come to Nicaragua, enjoy living here, but don't try to live off of Nicaragua's resources, even the ones you're allowed to via investment or whatever, on the rare chance that you have something, because you're not allowed to work as an employee here. That's not, not, you're not allowed to take people's jobs. You have to create jobs, right? That is a requirement if you're going to do something here. And so instead of living off of Nicaragua, think of living in Nicaragua. You need to continue to live off of wherever you are originally from, or somewhere else potentially, but not here. And that mindset, that is, that is what will make things make sense for you, I think. That is consistently when I'm having these discussions and I can't figure out why people are obsessing about opening a business here, especially before they've even gotten here. Uh, and I think it is, what is, what is this? Uh, I really think there is this feeling 
that you're going to want, even just want, to earn a living off of Nicaragua. And that doesn't make sense. That has to be, just take it off the table. Say, that can't happen. And if you find someone who's like, oh, come invest in our business. We're going to make you money. No, they're not. That is a con artist. There's nobody making money here except fleecing foreigners on real estate or investment scams. There is so much money to be made convincing Americans, Canadians, and Western Europeans that there are viable businesses here, that there is a hot real estate market, all these things. There's so much money, but you're not making that money from Nicaragua. They're in Nicaragua making their money from abroad. They are fleecing potentially you in another country. And normally that money transfer will happen in another country, but the fleecing will happen here. And guess whose jurisdiction those those little things fall under? Probably no one's, right? If you legally transfer money for something that was a scam in another country, there's very little you can do about it. And so it's a very, very popular, untouchable activity especially because in many cases it makes a lot of money for the country because foreigners are being relieved of their wallets, so to speak, in a virtual sense by convincing them to spend way too much on a house to invest in a business that has no viability, not in the wildest dreams. Um, and, and a lot of these, these businesses will, you know, propose things that if you, again, if you lived here first, even just for weeks, you would say, oh gosh, the people, the, these business plans don't make any sense based on what the actual market is like. Um, I've seen ones where people are saying, you know, oh, there's, it takes so long to do a thing, so you need this other thing. Well, but that thing doesn't take long. It's very fast here. Oh, we just thought it was long because we didn't research, right? Someone, someone said it in this, in this marketing spiel. So we believe, we didn't, and never suspected that the fundamentals were untrue, right? Since there's no sunshine in Nicaragua, we're, we're opening nuclear power plants. Oh, wow, that's a great investment. No, it's not, it, the sun never stops shining. Oh, we never thought they would lie about the sunshine. Yes, they will lie about the sunshine if it will get you to invest. So, yes, if you're looking at vlogs and stuff on YouTube, you're gonna find just a non-stop stream of people with things to sell you here in the country because you represent their foreign income. A huge, huge amount of it, the amount of money that can be made off of a single foreigner here is insane. It is so common for people to run real estate or business scams and fleece years and years of income off of foreigners really quickly. And it's just, it's incredible. There's so much money involved that, that there's no way it's going to stop. The only way you can protect yourself is by not engaging in those things. This is a wonderful country. You should not be doing anything from abroad. Do it here. Come here. See what life is really like. Earn your money from abroad. Live here in this beautiful place and avoid expatriates and people working for expatriates who are trying to earn high baller dollar amounts uh, by relieving you of money by convincing you you need to buy expensive real estate that no one here believes exists because it doesn't and by investing in businesses that make absolutely no sense whatsoever. Look at this really cool place we just stumbled on. I assume it's probably a hotel, but it kind of looks like just a really nice house. What a cute spot though. <clears throat> this is gonna be our, our wrap up for the day. Uh, I'm gonna show this as I walk by. I'm gonna mention our stuff and then after I do our, our little wrap up, support a spiel. Uh, I'm going to show the airport because it's it's really cool. You definitely want to see it. Um, and we have more content coming up from Ometepe, I sure hope, over the next several days. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but if you'd like to support the channel, of course, no matter what, just like and subscribe. Please, please, please like and subscribe. Also check out my new channel. This is Nicaragua. Uh, same thing, like and subscribe over there. It's brand new, but uh, we're going to be working hard on that and really excited about it. Uh, if you want to support this channel in a more meaningful way, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. That comes directly to me and really does support the channel. That's what makes all this possible because it costs money, even though it's not very much. We have to come out to Ometepe to film. We have to stay in hotels. We have to have the cameras. All that stuff takes quite a bit of money uh, to show you guys. And so that those support dollars help to offset 
what we're putting into this. This is a labor of love and cost quite a bit to do, but we'd really appreciate how much you guys are helping us out making this possible. And uh, as always, tell people about the show, post us on social media, put us on Facebook, put us on LinkedIn, Reddit, all that stuff. Get the word out there. This is gorgeous. I'm pretty sure it's a private house, but look at this, this driveway that goes around. I'm just walking into their house. This beautiful driveway over here and this like gazebo-ish thing and then this path that winds through. I don't know, this is this is cool, really cool. This is a very simple design just using wide open garden space, but it's fantastic. You really don't get too much of this outside of like the island just because of the way the land lies places. This is really great. So, all right, I'm gonna use this chance. We're gonna head off to the airport. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed today's show. I hope this is meaningful. I hope this really helps. I know it's it's a hard lesson, right? People don't want to hear that this isn't something you can do. This isn't this doesn't make any sense. You you just you have to give up on trying to be a business here if you want to make money. If you just want to do it for fun, go go for it. I absolutely understand business for fun. I'm a business for fun kind of guy, so I'm 100% with you on that. Um, but if, if you need to pay your bills, this isn't how you do it. There are really good ways to do it. This is how you save money. You save by living in Nicaragua. You earn by investing somewhere else. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow. All right, so we're here filming at the airport on Ometepe. This is one of the coolest things on the island that they built an airport long ago. And until 2018, this was very functional. But uh, we are... Um, uh, now at an airport that is not used because uh, it closed down in 2018. There's not a lot of traffic coming out here to the island. So now you, you've always had to drive across it. This is the main road going through the island. But, uh, uh, sorry, I got a bug in my mouth. The, um, uh, now it's just a road that you drive through. The airport is maintained because the plan is to reopen it again, but it's, it is so gorgeous. So I want to see, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Off in the distance, uh, we are looking roughly west. That is the mountain ridge, uh, low mountain ridge of, of mainland Nicaragua out there. So the ocean is out there eventually, but we're really far out. That is, that is the water out there. So we're pretty close to the beach, but we're going to turn around because this is Concepcion. This is the largest and most active of the island's uh, volcanoes. And it, the, air, the, the runway points straight at it. And it is just such a gorgeous view out here. It is fantastic. Uh, and it's so rare that you drive across a runway like this. We also did this in uh, uh, Gibraltar, where they have a kind of a similar situation with a much busier airport. But this is just, this is just fantastic. So. Uh, a point of interest, the thing to do on the island, here you can see where the main road goes through, and now they just have these permanent barricades, but they bring down uh, the the gates down on either side to make it that uh, you're, you're um, blocked when they're gonna be bringing in an airplane, which really isn't that often because it's a very small island with low population, but something very cool here, so I'm glad we were able to show that while we're out for a walk today.